our businesses in Texas use a lot more power and water than they need to, and they end up spending a tremendous more amount of money that could go into hiring people and building the business. My name is Charlene Hudinger. I'm the president of the Texas Pace Authority. It's a nonprofit that um, administers PACE programs for 27 local governments in Texas. I like to tell people it's the greatest program nobody's ever heard of. PACE uh, stands for Property Assessed Clean Energy. It's a financing program that was adopted by the state back in 2013 that allows municipalities and counties to adopt it locally. The bar field was the, the main driver behind getting it adopted because they had an interest in taking advantage of the program. It's going to be a Marriott Autograph Collection Hotel. Um, which means it's a boutique brand of Marriott. Total project costs, and that's including the purchase of the building, the lots, the permits, everything soup to nuts, is uh, right at 35 million. Buildings of this age uh, were designed um, prior to all modern systems of convenience that we, that we expect in a building, especially a hotel. Uh, cable TV, satellite, the list goes on and on, even all the way back to air conditioning, we're not a part of this space from a design standpoint. So working with the design team and getting all those systems incorporated into the building um, and still being true to the building's original design and intent and architectural look uh, is, is, is a huge challenge. The idea behind trying to find ways to help uh, businesses overcome the really high cost of equipment that would save them a lot of money in the long run, like air conditioning or boilers or solar panels. Um, the, the, the barriers are high cost and the fact that this equipment takes years before it breaks even in energy savings. That's what worked for the bar field. Um, it covered a little over six million uh, to get that one across the finish line. When this was created in 2013, uh, we had a number of cities on the 180 day list, which meant they had less than six months of water and had no idea where they were going to get it. So drought uh, was a big driver for this program as well as energy savings. We have all these people moving to Texas. They bringing their kids and their jobs and their companies and everybody needs more power. So for, a, for local communities, urban and rural, um, this is hugely important. The least expensive water and power we can find is water and power we already have. When we did the energy survey, which is a part of the PACE program, uh, by bringing in low uh, energy and high efficiency systems, we were able to reduce our carbon footprint and energy utilization by 73%. We're seeing a lot of people using this program to restore these wonderful old buildings. The amount of, of pure mass that was used to construct the building um, has allowed it to withstand not being occupied for quite some time. This building was almost purely solid concrete with the infill of original clay brick tiles, uh, both of which stood up beautifully to you know the semi-arid West Texas weather. It was never a question of whether or not the business model would work or if Amarillo was a strong enough market is really more of a question of timing. Uh, sometimes if I could mar time the market, I wouldn't have to work for a living. That was the whole point of shuttering and, and stepping aside in 09. You have to wait for the market to come back and, and, and lenders to be willing to consider things. And that started uh, about 2015. My grandfather was um, a depression baby. Actually, he was a teenager. And um, he always, you know, used to point out how things used to be made. And uh, I saw this building uh, here in the center of downtown, right on Route 66 and Polk Street. When you actually walk through this building, you realize the character of it and the strength of it. M.D. Oliver Ackle, Melissa Dora, was really kind of the uh, matriarch of the founding of the city. This was her crown jewel. That's exactly what she called it. And it was her testament to this city and what she believed uh, it should stand for. She was really the predominant player in real estate and finance in this city from when she moved here in 1895 till her death in 1830, or 1931. During that time period, women didn't vote. Uh, there was not any idea of equal rights. 
Texas is one of those rare states that came about really from the time when it really began to expand in a time of new ideas. And this building is a reflection of that, of that time period. Um, and strong women leadership throughout Texas history is, is well documented. Um, from the Angel of the Alamo all the way up to the Yellow Rose and, and through other examples of Texas history. And coming from a long line of Texas families, um, I, I think it's, I think it's, it, it shouldn't surprise us that there, wasn't a, that there was a woman who saw an opportunity to conduct herself as a business man or person in today's terms back in a time when it shouldn't have been allowed. But she found the opportunity here and, and came out west like many of us many of our families, I should say. The um, room count is 112 rooms. On the first floor, there's a 2,500 square foot lobby, uh, seating in the restaurant for uh, 90, and then another 20 in the bourbon bar. And then in the basement, there will be a speakeasy, just like there was in 1926, or even go back to this same name, which is Paramount Recreation Club. It'll seat about 70 in there. And then there's a, also a meeting room in the basement, seats about another 20 private meeting room, which is really cool because it's actually there in the speakeasy, but you have to come through a uh, bookcase to get to it. And then on the first floor, we have a 1,500 square foot banquet space for wedding receptions and business meetings and things. That's an addition to uh, the property there to the south side. One of the challenges with this program is um, it sounds too good to be true and it's hard for people to get their arms around how it really works. So to have a first project kind of opens the door to many others. It's gonna be probably the, uh, for Amarillo, uh, as she wanted it to be in 1926, the crown jewel of the city.